Hello, this is Spike Chartel. And sometimes when I'm deciding on what to do another video about, something so juicy just falls right into my YouTube feed that I can't ignore it. I had a few ideas, but I think this... This is probably going to make for a better video than any of the things I was considering. Ah, oh, this motherfucker. Ah, oh, this asshole. Well, this will be interesting. I've been thinking about doing a video on the descent of Cucky for a while now, and this seems to be just as good an example as any. Now, far be it from me to feel a need to come to the defense of Armored Skeptic. I'm sure he's more than capable of making a response video to this and doesn't need the input of a small potatoes channel like mine. But this is more about documenting the descent of a YouTube personality than it is about defending a content creator I happen to like. Even if I think he's a bit of a cocky asshole sometimes, who gives me the impression that he thinks he's the hottest thing since Hiroshima. Anyway... Let's see what Kaki has to say about the night. First of all, here's a video he made. I'm cringing to death watching this video Armor Skeptic made, which he originally titled Ed the Cuck, where he is literally arguing with a sock puppet about how evil feminism is. Starting to think he might be the worst person to ever live. Okay, so you're a cuck. Making fun of a guy that uses a cartoon knight avatar to make fun of a sock puppet character who, as I understand, spent years being what many would consider today to be the epitome of misogyny, for all of a sudden going all feminazi woke. Is that the whole gist of this? Is this what passes for quality content with the kids these days? Is this what's hot in the streets? Can you imagine making a video called Ed the Cuck and using the word cuck non-ironically? God, so fucking cringe, man. Because obviously anyone who uses the word cuck is obviously cringy. So says the leftist edgy edgelord man. This is so fucking cringe. Apparently, uh, Ed the Sock is a some kind of character in Canada that is much loved. And uh, he made a YouTube series where he basically spoke out in favor of feminism. And of course, can't have that. You can't speak out about feminism. Ah, yes. We can't speak out about supremacist movements on the left, now can we? That would be totally cringy because current year and all. Isn't without us making fun of you, so I'm gonna call you a cuck. Seriously, if you unironically use the word cuck, please unsubscribe from me. Please, if you're if you're on my Patreon, stop. I don't want your money. Like I don't want to be associated with you. Oh, cucky, I wouldn't ever unsub from you. I'm too fond of train wrecks to do that. Of course, you don't have to worry about me giving you money on Patreon because I work too hard to just give my money to talentless hex chasing whatever trend he thinks will get him views. I'm just sitting here waiting for this new woke audience to turn on you because if it's one thing that is undeniable about the modern left, it's that it will always eat its own. These are the people that I, I'm embarrassed by. I, it's just it's just cringe. Anyway, this is the best thing that he did that I'm going to cover. So just to show you. All right. Oh my God, dude. Greg. Fucking Greg, dude. All right, I'll just play it. I'll just let you hear it for yourself. I think that white supremacists are bad people. I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to justify anything that they've done up to this point, but they don't tend to cause violence in the U.S. and Canada the way that Antifa seems to cause violence on a regular basis. <laughs> Asshole just seriously showing multiple news articles of the same debunked studies and claims made by the ADL, which is almost as big a joke as the SPLC at this point, and acting like it somehow proves something. Basically what he's doing here is he's whitewashing. He's whitewashing violence caused by white supremacists because he's doing this. It's not even a false equivalency. He's not even saying they're equal to Antifa. He's saying Antifa is worse, even though, as I just showed you, let's see if I can pull this back up. 73% of extremist killings in the United States were caused by right-wing extremists. You know, the, only 3% were caused by the left. You know, it, white supremacy murders doubled in 2017. They're the ones committing all the, I say real violence, but yeah, some Antifa guy hit somebody with a bite block, but we're talking about multiple fucking murders, okay? Multiple murders. Can you name one leftist let one Antifa member want, want anything who has killed anybody in the United States? I couldn't find any. Maybe they did. I don't know. But the vast majority of this are right-wing white supremacists. Okay. So there are some interesting caveats to the claim that murders by white supremacists doubled in 2017. In the interest of giving his argument as much help as possible, I'll use the sources cocky as citing here as flawed as they are. In 2017, there were 37 extremist-related murders, according to the ADL. In a nation of over 320 million people, mind you. 
and that 18 of those were related to white supremacy somehow. Now, assuming that they're not lying or fudging the statistics, I'll agree that 18 is too many, but let's be honest here for a moment. When Kaki is citing these stats, he's leaving out the actual number because, like the rest of the left, he's wanting to mislead people and make them think the problem is far worse than it is. While 18 is too many, it's hardly a crisis or epidemic in a nation of over 320 million people, especially given that worldwide there are generally around 200 attacks carried out every month by the religion of peace, and in more than a few cases, more people will die in one of those attacks than inbred rednecks and bedsheets will ever be responsible for in a given year. I might also add that according to FBI statistics, over half of all murders in the U.S. are committed by members of a demographic that shall remain unnamed in this video for purposes of not wanting to be censored. That only makes up 13% of the population. I'd also be remiss if I didn't add that the vast majority of those murders, the victims, are members of the demographic that shall not be named. I'd say those people have far more to fear from the small minority of hyperviolent people in their demographic than they do from Bubba the Sister Fucker. Also, there'll be links to all of this in the description down below, because unlike cuck dicks looking to get views by appealing to the emotions of fickle leftists, I actually like to back up the things I say with evidence beyond some screenshots of biased media articles, because as a true skeptic, I actually value the intelligence of my audience, and don't feel like it's in good form to insult their intelligence by expecting them to just believe unfounded claims because reasons. Also, warning. Straw man approaching after this brief montage of Antifa attacking people and being violent, set to a classic theme y'all know and love. <laughs> Greg saying, no, white supremacists are not nearly as bad as Antifa. This is total whitewashing of white supremacy. 100 fucking percent. Is it, though? I mean, you're making it out that skeptics said the Klan did nothing wrong, but let's just replay that clip from earlier in your attempt at a video. I think that white supremacists are bad people. I'm not going to argue that. I'm not going to justify anything that they've done up to this point. But Clearly, Greg didn't say that sister fucking wearers of bedsheets don't cause violence. It's pretty obvious that they do. I might also add that James Hodgkins is a leftist that did target people on the right, sitting members of Congress, I might add, in an attempted attack in 2017. What else? Oh yeah, the feel when Jordan Peterson mails you an autographed copy of his book to thank you for your video which backed up his lies on Bill C-16 and directly led to the mountainous amount of hate towards trans people. Ah, what would a good cuck video be without a little bashing of Jordan Peterson? Never mind the fact that the alt-right hates Peterson for discouraging people to join their ranks in reaction to the identity politics of the regressive left. Seriously, Cucky, do you even realize that the whole political spectrum is more complicated than the alt-right and everyone else? Do you even realize that it's possible to reject the ideas of both the alt-right and the ideas of the far left? Do you even realize that it's possible to be, oh my god, in the center? I mean... From what I can tell, Peterson is kind of a middle-of-the-road thinker. While I don't agree with everything he says, like how we should encourage people to take religion back up, to give them a sense of purpose lost in a world where people are abandoning religion, as I think that's a step in the wrong direction, as I think people should learn how to deal with the fact that life is meaningless and how to live their lives without the constraints of needing it to have a purpose. I can understand why someone like Peterson would come to that conclusion, though. 
for the most part, I think much of what he says is just common sense things. Like, don't criticize people for things you yourself are guilty of, or don't be a hypocrite. As a seven atheist on the Dawkins scale, I can totally appreciate that sentiment. Now, I would get into why C-16 was ridiculous, as it was basically further normalization of a mental illness, and how things like that are making the lines of objective, observable reality blurred even more. But that's a video all in and of itself that I'm planning to make in the future, so y'all will just have to wait on that. But I will say this, from what I saw, I saw more people worried about freedom of speech and expression than they were about hating supposed trans people. Truth be told, I saw a lot of people opposed to it that thought discrimination against said people was bad, but also was worried about how it would affect free speech in Canada, which has already been severely eroded by Trudeau. But I suppose that's because I actually listened to the arguments of the people that made against those arguments against his C-16, instead of just parroting what the TV and mainstream media told me to think. On a personal note, I don't think mental disorders involving delusions should be considered protected identities, whatever that means. As it seems to me, if we really cared about these individuals, we'd push to get them the psychiatric help they need, instead of making it harder for mental health workers to give them that help out of fear of losing their license to practice due to supposed bigotry. All right, next up. And, uh... Back in the day, like when I was trying to talk to these people, when they were smearing me and lying about me and saying that I was lying about them and saying, don't listen to Dusty, he's just irrelevant, trying to be popular and attacking people to make money. Because you are attacking people to try to make money. I mean, it's pretty obvious that your whole shtick since the beginning was to try to come across as edgy for the sake of being edgy. And I'll be honest, there were times it worked, but this latest trend... Not so much. I was like, motherfucker, let's debate. I'll debate you. I'll pull up all the fucking receipts and show you this shit. And then, uh, uh, so he gets on his fucking Twitter and he acts like a badass. And he's like, I don't know about bearing, but I would debate Cult of Dusty buck naked if it, if it would shut him up about my cartoon character. And so, same day, look, same exact day, November 14th, I messaged him and I was like, awesome. Let's do this fucking dude. Let's do it. When's good for you? Immediately. Let's fucking do this. And of course, he posted online right after that. I was just kidding about that. I was just fucking kidding. I'm not going to debate Dusty. Fuck. Obvious jokes should have been obvious. Seriously, though, I get the impression this video is starting to get kind of long. And I think at this point, I probably beat the horse enough for the entertainment of my viewers. He does continue on about the whole VidCon drama from a few years back, where Francisca Ramsey basically stabbed a bunch of content creators in the back. And, of course, Dusty thinks she's just tops. There is one more thing, though. I think Cucky might be seeing things... But I'll let you guys be the judge. All right, well, one more. Oh, yeah. And so, here's one thing I do all the time. Like, when people come and defend TJ against the shit I say, or come and defend Greg or Shoe on Head, I like to go look these people up to see what kind of people you're attracting. And this motherfucker who was defending you guys literally has a swastika as his fucking picture. Look at that shit. Swastika? What swastika? I mean... If I put the video on full screen and squint, I kinda see one, but swastika or no swastika, this is a classic example of leftist cucks trying to smear people through association. Seriously, in what world is it logical to chastise an entertainer or content creator for the fans of their work? Does the left not realize that people have no control over the people that happen to like their work? Assuming for a second that the person Cucky is using here to smear Greg is an actual alt-right Hitler Nazi, of which we are provided very dubious evidence, I guess that's what regressives mean by receipts, which I always thought were just slips of paper that proved you purchased something, but whatever. How exactly is that proof that skeptic is alt-right? I mean, weren't you earlier complaining about alt-right people watching and being subbed to your channel? Seriously, if you unironically use the word cuck, please unsubscribe from me. Please, if you're, if you're on my Patreon, stop. I don't want your money. Like, I don't want to be associated with you. So by your own logic, you yourself are alt right, Cucky. As while you claim you don't want these people watching your videos, they still do. Why haven't you done anything about it? Obviously, it's because you're a right-wing Hitler Nazi who wants to gas the Jews. Anyway, I'm going to end it here. This is pretty much all of what there was to comment on. I will include a link to Cucky's video as well so he can 
can't claim that I took things out of context, which I know he will if he happens to see this. If you all like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already. Thank you for listening and have a great day.